Hello, welcome back, friend, family, or even foe. Back again with the skyline. Now today, we're working on something that might not be too interesting, but is crucial. If you know anything about these old Japanese cars, you know that their radios are not the best. Um, especially when all of the radio frequencies are tuned to Japanese frequencies. You can't even really pick up anything here in the States. Um, so if I show you guys inside the car real quick, do a little zoom in. There's the factory radio and there is a Bluetooth speaker in the passenger seat that I have been using to uh, play music when I drive. Obviously not the best, not good volume. Uh, just kind of a, a weird situation, especially if you have a passenger with you. Um, so I went ahead, ordered up some parts here, spin you guys back around. First up, we have this Alpine UTE 73 Bluetooth. Um, this is just a singled in radio. Um, I've ordered tons of these in the past for many different vehicles. Um, there's really nothing special about it. Um, it's kind of just a basic singled in, but for the price you pay and you know, the quality that you're getting, I think it's really one of the best options, uh, out there that you can grab. Um, so that's why I went ahead and got another one. So we have that there. We'll be tossing this guy in. Um, and then obviously I figured, you know what, while we're doing that, let's replace the speakers. So I just found these uh, Kicker CS series. Um, these are four by six, uh, kind of that oval shape. And those should be the correct size for the door speakers down in there. Um, so I got those for that. Hopefully make the sound quality a little bit better. Uh, I'm not expecting a ton out of these. They were pretty cheap. Um, and then I just have matching CS series six and a half um, round speakers to go in the back here. Um, I'm missing those speaker covers, which really grinds my gears, but you know, find me a set that isn't absurdly priced and I'll, got, uh, I'll, I'll get them, but uh, it's not worth it in my opinion. But anyways, we got those to replace these. Um, and if we just, you know, look at the, the, the ones back here, Real quick if I can get it to focus there we go um yeah I, I'm not sure what you would really expect to come out of those to begin with so we got these for the rear so we have front and rear speakers um you know just again to hopefully make it sound better make putting this in actually worth it um and then along with the radio uh from the research that I've done this is the best harness to try to match up there's the number for you guys if you want to do this yourself. Um, but just a simple harness there. Um, this is a antenna adapter. Apparently they got a little weird boy up in there. So that came with it as well. Um, I grabbed some speaker wire for these guys um, from the research that I've done. They have amplifiers wired in line with the front and the rear speakers. Um, so I just grabbed some speaker wire to bypass that, get it from the direct signal to the speakers. Um, and then I grabbed these since I'm gonna be tapping in before the amps. Um, these are just kind of some connectors so that I don't have to um, risk fucking up any of the wiring or anything like that. Um, so yeah, that's what we got all here. Um, so basically first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and throw the head unit in, the radio in, whatever you want to call it, uh, get that all wired up. So then that way we can make sure that that's working before we go ahead and do these. And then also I think it'd be fun if we just did a little test of how does this sound with the factory speakers, go ahead and put these in and then see how it sounds with those installed. And then hopefully we'll be able to drive this thing without having a Bluetooth speaker riding shotgun playing the music um yeah that's that's the goal so let's let's get inside let's start cracking shit apart 
and let's get into this install. All right, so now we are inside the car. Um, so it's time to start getting everything ready. Uh, apparently the first step is to just pull this good little guy out there. Boom. And then there's going to be two screws. Phillips head up inside here. And of course, it wouldn't be an install unless there was complications. So this kind of just feels like it's spinning in place. I guess we'll reapproach that one when the time calls. But then uh, next step is going to be to take off the knob. Um, and then after that, I have some uh, little pry tools here that I like to use for these types of things. Um, but basically, you're just going to start working around. that off first real quick and it looks like we have a couple more screws down in here that need to come out I try to be very careful with these old plastics here don't want to crack any of these all right so I was able to get a little bit more pressure on that and get that off that last little screw in there so then we're just gonna start Carefully sliding this guy out. Alright, some weird kind of uh, little breather vent there. Detach that guy. And then need to detach nine volt over here. I think we're just going to dangle that off to the side, to be honest. Uh, I don't want to with it too much there all right so now we're here um, it's looking like we're probably gonna need to take off the six screws three on each side up here Maybe that gets us and oh looks like this little plate comes right off the top like that and there we come all right bunch of connections here and then <sighs> radio all right so Here's our old radio. Let's go ahead and bring this over to the bench. We can uh, swap the mounting brackets over and then we can get ready to mount our new one. Um, let's get it going. So now it is time to crack in to the new head unit. And let's see here, we got a bunch of different shit. This is the main piece we need right here. So base of the radio. But what we're looking for is this right here. Alright. So this is um, the harness. And then over here we have the harness that connects to the inside of the car. As you can see here, we have two different connections. Bada bing, bada boom. Uh, that's the car side. And then the radio side over here. We just have the one with all the different connections. Now all of these should just be pretty straightforward of what goes to what. Um, so, you know, nothing much to, to really say here. Basically, you just wire these into this, and then uh, it, it should be plug and play from there. So, I'm gonna move you guys again over to the side, 
Uh, I got my soldering iron heating up right now. I like to solder my radio connections just so that I don't have to get back in there. That's the biggest pain of them all is when you finish something, you gotta go back and do it again. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna uh, head over there, prepare all the wires on these side, on this side, because if you can see here, um, they just have the uh, insulation all over them. So basically I'm just gonna strip all these down, get them ready to go. And then we'll start uh, soldering the connections up and then we can uh, get ready to put the radio swapped over and then uh, back into the car. All right, so we finished up the harness minus this ground wire, um, but I think that was what this uh, little screw over here was holding. I can show you guys when we get back in the car, but there was a little washer over it for the ground, I believe. Um, so I'm hoping that's what that's for there. Other than that, we have everything else wired up. Um, so we're done with the harness for now. Next step is going to be to remove these mounting brackets um, from this combo here, um, both sides and then attach it to the new radio, um, making sure everything lines up and looks you know, nice and flush like this. Um, that way we retain our little pocket here, um, just for a seamless, seamless look there. So I'm gonna go ahead and transfer those over to the new radio and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, so got our harness here, all set. And then uh, got the radio down there, out of view right now but uh, got that all put together. So now we're back in the car. Um, and this, this is what I was talking about with these grounds here. Um, I think that's what these are for here. Yep, ground. Um, so that should work fine. Um, but the next step we have here is to, I'm gonna tuck this ground out of the way for a second. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and Put these connectors together. All right, so we have everything mounted up here. Just transfer the brackets over. Uh, pretty, pretty simple, pretty straightforward there. All right, so now that we are here, I'm gonna move my pry tools off to the side and start putting these screws back in. All right, so before I go any further, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the face of the radio and I'll just make sure that everything works real quick. All right, we got the face over here. So let's pop this in there. Nice. And now let's see if it works. Let's see if I remember how to do this correctly, first of all. All right, so it's working, but as we can tell, uh, these speakers are not hot. Um, so let's uh, let's put the dash back together, get this all wrapped up up front, um, and then we can move on to the speakers. Uh, so I'm gonna do the same process essentially in reverse this time, um, and then uh, then we can move on. All right, so slight little update for you guys. Um, I went back in here and I took all these ground wires and I fed them into a new flat washer setup so that all of them get a better ground and it's easier to work with. Um, and then I also took the head unit here 
and I re-drilled these holes to have it sitting back a little bit more. That way when I put the face on it, it sits more flush in there. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead, throw this all back together, get it back mounted in there, and then I'll show you how it sits with that. All right, so threw everything back together. This is how the radio sits now. Uh, much more flush with the rest of the center console, AC, pocket, whatever thing, my jig. Um, so that was definitely worth it there. Um, it just looks way more OEM-ish now. All right, so now it is time to change out the speakers. I'm gonna start with the doors and then do the rears after. Um, but so just taking a quick look, we've got one screw that's gonna be down in there, two caps with screws there, and then looking underneath, two screws on the bottom. And that should be it to get this door panel off. So I'm gonna take all those off and then uh, hopefully this door just pops right off for us. All right, quick update for you guys. We got the door panel off. A couple things that I didn't realize, but I will let you guys know about. Underneath this handle here, there's a little cover you gotta pop off. There's a screw in there. You have to pop out this little thing. There's a screw back in there. Make sure you pull that out. Um, the door handle trim needs to pop off. Um, and then there's three screws on the bottom, not two. But here we are now. Uh, we have access to the door speaker. So next step is to remove that um, and then assess our situation from there. All right, we got a slight update for you guys. Um, we got the new speaker installed. I forgot to record me doing the wiring and stuff like that. Um, I ended up having to trim the mounting bracket for the new speakers just slightly to fit inside there. Um, but it works out, I tested it, it's playing. Um, obviously these ones you won't really see, but they're in there. Um, I'll make sure to record some of the wiring for the other part. But now that everything's working, tested, confirmed, next step is to throw the door card back on. So just doing everything in reverse pretty much. Um, and then we can move on, get the other side done, and then move on to the rears, so. Let's do it. All right, everyone, I am now on the driver's side door here. And I just wanted to show you these uh, little connectors that I've been using here. So you unscrew the one side. And then you feed your wire in through that little hole there. And then on the other side is a little pin. Um, so it grabs the connection. The other side screws off. You feed your new wire in there. Um, and then you just tighten both sides down. Um, that way you don't have to cut anything and you're still getting a, a good direct connection in theory. Um, the other side worked pretty well, so I'm gonna do the same thing over here. All right, everyone. I just wanted to show you before I tuck all this away. That's what they look like um, installed. Those little twist connection things, probers, whatever. Um, and then you can just make your connections to your speaker, mount it up. You're good to go. I always recommend testing it when you're right here just to make sure that the sound's coming through. Um, everything's working as it should uh, before you do all the work to put everything back together. But we're good to go. So I'm gonna throw this all back together and then we can move on to the rears. All right, little update for you guys. Got the rear seat out of the car. So if I come in here, deck lid just slid right out and then uh, there's one speaker, there's two. So I'm mainly just going to be redoing the process that I did in the front doors. Take the old speaker out, tap in those connections, new speaker in, um, and then put everything back together. So I'll give you an update in a minute. Okay, I forgot to record a midway segment of the rear install. Um, I'm putting the seat back in now, but if we look up top, we got the speakers in, um, unfortunately I couldn't get any covers to work, so that's how it is for now. But I think even that looks better than uh, having those piece of shit paper speakers back in there. Um, those ones right there, obviously. But looking at it from uh, the outside now, and granted I might add some tint later, but um, they really just help blend in more, and it really does make a big impression on the back. Um, so I'm going to finish throwing the seat back in there, uh, 
and then we're basically done. Zip it up, this M6 to ARP so big I can't even pick it up. This bitch got so much kick, I let it hit. This bitch start lifting up. Bitch hit harder than a damn. Bitch hit harder than a bus. I'm a ghetto rich nigga. Where the cat for billy trucks? The op hoes be chum buckets. And they niggas weenie hush. You got one time to game my trunks. Just keep it real, don't fuck it up. But bitches gonna be bitches just to stay. Cause all these bitches suck. So it's a lot louder with the new speakers in there. Um, which is nice cause, you know, windows down cruising, uh, not the quietest, so. I don't fuck with motherfuckers. I can't fuck with motherfuckers. All my niggas real smackers. All my niggas head rappers. All my killers real actors. Fuck telling them pills, nigga. All my choppers real actors. Sounds a lot better, basically. Um, so, yeah. That's where I'm going to leave this for now. Um, again, sits much better up in there. It actually looks like it kind of fits in there. Um, and then obviously you can still take the face off or, or whatever you want to do with it. Um, but yeah, so there's that. Um, next video, I'm going to be putting in the short shifter. Um, I got a new shift knob as well. Um, so we can tie that all into one little, little video. Shouldn't be too hard. Shouldn't be too long. But that's where we call it today. Until next time, peace out.